Aloha, everybody. It is I, the Great Clement. And today, I'm booting up my PlayStation 2 to look at a game in a franchise that I haven't really covered yet on this channel. This is Crash Twin Sanity, released in 2004 for the PlayStation 2, the Xbox, as well as PC, I believe. This is one of the post-Naughty Dog Crash Bandicoot games that some people might have overlooked. Whenever you talk about Crash Bandicoot and what games are must-play, people usually refer to the original trilogy that was on the PlayStation. Crash 1, Crash 2, Crash 3. And after Crash 3, Naughty Dog handed the franchise off to Traveler's Tales, and then they did Wrath of Cortex, which had a bit of a mixed reaction. Some people like it, some people don't. Um, I personally didn't really like Wrath of Cortex all that much, but that's just me. And the follow-up to Wrath of Cortex was this entry. This is technically Crash 5, this is Crash Twin Sanity, and this game was super unique and super fun to play uh, when I first experienced it back in the day, and uh, I think this game's pretty underappreciated, pretty underrated. Um, so yeah, Crash Twin Sanity. It does a lot of things differently from the previous games that came before it. It has a bit of an open-world-ish exploration aspect to it. Uh, the music is really quirky and fun. The humor is all over the place. Like, this is the funniest Crash Bandicoot game in the whole entire series. And what they do with Dr. Neo Cortex, the main villain of the series, is so fantastic. And uh, the writing alone makes this game kind of worth experiencing at least once in your life. So yeah, folks, it's not my favorite game in the series, but I like it a lot. Let's get into it. Sleep, my insipid angel. Bum, 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 bum. Crash! Crash! Where are you, big brother? There's something weird going on in the bay! Come see! Oh my god. Coco got hot! God damn! <laughs> Either way, folks, there he is, our lovable PlayStation protagonist. Oh, PlayStation protagonist. He used to be the mascot of PlayStation. But there he is, Crash Bandicoot, finding himself in a very wide, more open location than he's used to. It is I, Aku Aku. My duty is to protect you. You may summon me by breaking open these crates. Call me thrice, and I shall grant you special powers. Despite the change in scenery, this game still operates very much like one of the old Crash Bandicoot games in terms of how it controls and what Crash is capable of. He still runs around, he still spins into crates and stuff with the square button. Um, why do you have a bathrobe of yourself? Are you that much of a narcissist, Crash Bandicoot, that you would have a bathrobe with your face on it? Come on! Come on! <laughs> Ooh, what's that on the cliff? It looks like a Chaos Emerald, but people refer to them as colored gems in this series, so whatever. Unfortunately, it's surrounded by a whole bunch of Nitro Boxes, so as you can see, I'm being a horrible, awful asshole. <laughs> I am intentionally scaring the chickens by chasing after them, and then they run away from you. And you want to try and chase the chickens into the Nitro Boxes so that they will lower the spring box that will take you to the red colored gem. Uh, Crash Bandicoot's a hero. He's a good guy. I think. He's just kind of stupid and kind of reckless and, uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, folks, as you can see, uh, I'm just kind of going wherever I want. This is not a track level like so many of the previous Crash Bandicoot games. Like, if you've ever played Crash 2, Crash 3, you generally start off in a pathway and then you just go from one point to the other destroying every box you can see along the way so that you'll eventually get a gem and the crystal. And, um, Crash Twin Sanity operates very, very differently. <laughs> I like this cliff. <laughs> We're just underneath this waterfall stream, so, like, all the fish are just, like, raining down onto the jagged rocks. <laughs> they don't even damage you, either. You just, like, 
take a little bit of a bump if they run into you. And it's just like, okay. <laughs> Those poor fishies. I mean, my god. But, um, throughout these levels are going to be six gems in every single area. Six colored gems to find, and I'm going to be doing the best I can to collect every single gem in this game. I will have trouble with some levels, especially the snowboarding section that will come up later. Oh, it's hard to collect all the gems in the snowboarding levels, let me tell ya. But I will do the best I can to find every single one of them. All they really unlock in this game is concept art, bonus videos, deleted material. Um, they don't actually unlock a better ending, because how it is usually in other Crash Bandicoot games, you know, you'd beat the game with all the power crystals, you beat every single level, but then you get this bad ending where they're like, oh, you should have collected all the gems, now you should go back and find them. <laughs> and then you find all the gems, you know. And then you get your good ending. But Twin Sanity doesn't have a bad or good ending. Once you beat the final boss, that's the ending that everyone is going to experience. So, collecting these colored gems, entirely optional, not necessary for a happy ending, and they're very easy to miss, and you can't exactly backtrack to previous locations anyway. It has an open-worldish, big, wide kind of thing going on, but Twin Sanity is very linear as a game. You go from one level, move on to the next area, move on to the next area, move on to the next area, Sometimes you can go back to certain spots, like... When you reach Cortex's lab, you can take a boat to go back to Insanity Island, but there's still gonna be a lot of places you can't go back to, and so you need to collect them as you see them, otherwise you're gonna have to new game plus it in order to find them again. Well, I don't think this game has new game plus. It has new game, so you can restart the whole adventure all over again. But, uh... <laughs> Either way, the gems are completely optional. That's all I'm saying. There's lots of Wumpa Fruit lying around. You collect 100 Wumpa Fruit, you get an extra life. And that's all they're for. When it comes to health, that's just the Aku Aku masks that you find along the way. You pick up one, you're allowed to take one hit. You pick up two, you're allowed to take two hits. You pick up three, it will slap onto Crash Bandicoot's face and it will make him a little bit invulnerable and powerful for a short period of time. Although there are some things that still kill you when you have the mask on, which is different from the Naughty Dog trilogy. Uh, for example, Nitro Boxes still kill you, even when you have the mask on. I know, that's bullshit. I don't know why it's like that in Twin Sanity, but uh, I guess they really want you to solve the puzzles the correct way, so yeah. This is Crash Bandicoot's house. We can't really go in, so instead, let's chase after Coco. Come on, follow me, Crash! Stay close and do what I do! So, Coco is our tutorial lady. She's going to be showing you how to spin, how to double jump. Uh, double jump was an unlockable thing in Crash 3, if I remember correctly. Um, but in this game, you automatically have the double jump as soon as the game starts up. It's nice and helpful for a lot of platforming. Um, you have the ability to slide, you have the ability to crawl around by holding the circle button and moving with the analog stick. You can jump on the boxes and bounce off of them, or you can just smash them with your spin. If you jump and push the circle button, you do the slam, which will destroy metal boxes. It's Crash Bandicoot as you know it. It's easy! All too easy. Yes, Coco, all too easy. Your voice is very deep, but it's very sexy, I'm telling you. <laughs> it's very, very sexy, let me tell you. But, uh, like I said, I'm getting all the colored gems, that's why I'm destroying all these totems and stuff. You shoot this cannon, uh, if you slam the button, it shoots an exploding cannonball very far, but if you just tap the button, it releases this cannon that you can push around, and they'll explode as soon as they enter the totem's mouths, so yeah. That thing you just saw me do, that is this game's version of the slide jump. Unfortunately, the slide jump is very different from how it was in Crash 2 and Crash 3. In 2 and 3, when you slid and then jumped, you would get way extra height. You would jump so much higher than if you just normally jumped. And it actually made so much of the platforming a lot more enjoyable. Um, and it's one of my biggest tips if you're having trouble with Crash Bandicoot 2 or Crash Bandicoot 3. 
Slide jumps are your friends, ladies and gentlemen. In those particular games, whether for the original PlayStation or in the new in the newly released Insane Trilogy, slide jumps are your friend. But um Oh, with this totem, I have to push the ball and then slide into it in order to make it go high over the log, and then it goes right into the mouth and destroys it so it can be a platform for me. Booyah! But um, in 2 and 3, they were used for elevation. They were used to make the platforming a lot better, and I liked it how it was in those games. Uh, but unfortunately, in Twin Sanity, slide jumping just makes it so you lunge forward and you get a little bit extra distance and you move through the area a little bit quicker but uh, it doesn't operate the way it used to. So, that kind of sucks. The slide jump is not how it was in the original games. Twin Sanity's not my favorite game in the series. I actually still prefer Crash Bandicoot 3 and 2 over this one. 3 being my personal top favorite. I love Warped. Warped was one of my favorite childhood games growing up on the PlayStation. Um, but, you know... I still think this game is ridiculously charming, ridiculously funny, and the music is so quirky and odd that I have to recommend people check out the soundtrack for Crash Twin Sanity because it doesn't sound like any Crash Bandicoot game that came before it, you know? Adiop! <laughs> It's true! Blondes do have more fun! <laughs> Coco's having a lot of fun being a blonde. And that's totally Coco. Totally. But you bounce on that worm, you can find yourself a green colored gem. And if you go into this little area over here, you'll see a whole bunch of nitro boxes. Nitro boxes are instant kill no matter how much masks you have, by the way. If you have two masks, Nitro Box will still kill you in one hit in Twin Sanity, so you absolutely do not want to touch them. Be careful around Nitro Boxes. They're the green ones, and you just don't want to touch them. You want other things to blow them up, whether chickens, whether TNT boxes, whether smashing enemies into them. You know, do whatever you can to destroy them through other means. Don't try and touch them yourself. But with that particular gem, I have all six of the Chaos Emeralds, and I could get the good ending in Sonic 1. <laughs> but with this particular area, I got every single gem. So, uh, yeah, so far, so good. I think I'm doing pretty okay. With TNT boxes, you can jump on them to set them off, but don't spin into them, because if you spin into a TNT box, it will immediately explode and it will damage you, and uh, that's no good. So just jump on TNT boxes. Do not spin into them at all. Spin into the enemies, though. That's fine. Uh, uh, I'm okay! The spikes broke my fall. <laughs> Ow. But yeah, you can crouch under objects with this. Whoa! See, I'm, I'm hitting the nitro box so that it bounces, and then it will explode, and then it causes a chain reaction and all that jazz. And there's a 1-up. One 1-ups one are very valuable in this game. Hey, hey, hey! Yeah, you! I've been doing this for ten stinking years! Back and forward, back and forward, and I'm sick of it! Well, I'm not gonna do it no more! Well, jeez, buddy. It's been a good ten years, hasn't it? Oh. If you will not operate the way you're supposed to, you will die. <laughs> and for some reason, there was a trap for this particular plant. I don't know. Either way, folks, we're done with the first area, and now we're coming up to uh, our sister Coco, who is totally our friend and will not be a boss fight. Totally not. <laughs> Surprised to see me crash? Like the fleas in your fur, I keep coming back. Three years I spent alone in the frozen Antarctic wastes. And I missed you. And so I've organized a little gathering, like a birthday party, except the exact opposite. And look, all of your friends are here. 
you are so very popular. Let's start handing out the presents. If you're unfamiliar with the series, yes, those are all bosses from previous Crash Bandicoot games. Except for Polar, who's holding the baseball bat, who's the polar bear. I just imagine he's pissed off at Crash because in order to get a whole bunch of extra lives in Crash 2, you have to jump on him endlessly. <laughs> this is from Tiny. This is from Dingo Dial. Ripperoo, you shouldn't have. Finstripe, how thoughtful. Oh dear, two of the same! But don't worry, I can't do this. So Cortex is going to be shooting a whole bunch of bullets at you. There's always a cursor whenever he does. The only way to damage him is to reflect his green energy blasts back at him. Uh, you can spin him when he's on the ground. Uh, it doesn't actually do anything, but it feels like a carryover from Crash 3 when the objective was to knock him into that pit during that final boss. It's just kind of fun that Crash Twin Sanity actually starts off with a final boss battle, you know? <laughs> this isn't the easiest boss fight in the game either. The next one coming up is the easiest fight. Uh, it's actually possible to die in this one, especially with the narrow platforms and how easy it is for him to shoot you. So uh, just be careful, don't fall into the spikes, and pay attention to that cursor. But of course, when the green energy blast comes, knock it back. Oh! Meet your brand new, hydraulically operated, Twin Brother Mecha Bandicoot! Who was that? Dr. you are magnificent! Of course I was, you fool! Initiate missile attack! So Mecha Bandicoot has three attacks. It will shoot missiles at wherever you are, you just move to get out of the way. It tries to hit you with its chainsaw, but again, you just move out of the way. And then it shoots its green energy blasts, which, just like with Cortex, you spin those energy blasts to damage the Mecha Bandicoot. And the fun thing about this boss fight is that the more you damage it, eventually you start destroying pieces off of it, and then it can't do some of its moves. It can't use the chainsaw anymore, so all it has is the blasts and the missiles. <laughs> this fight's really fun. It's actually kind of challenging if you're not expecting it. It can be... I don't know what happened there. Uh, it can actually be pretty challenging if you're, if you're a first-time video game player. In fact, Twin Sanity itself is a pretty challenging game down the road. Uh, so, brace yourselves if you pick this up. This game can be quite challenging, but uh, for the final hit, spin. Booyah! That is Cortex and his assistant Engine, ladies and gentlemen. So yeah, we already took on the final boss. That's a first. <laughs> We're going to find out what's going on in this game in part two. See you then.